It's Global Entrepreneurship Week, but many other exciting things are happening in our local space. Take, for example, a chance to witness the staging of a live sporting event. It has been a while, but our record boys are headed to the National Stadium, and you can too. We'll tell you how. Plus, we're engaging some young entrepreneurs and much more. It's only 30 minutes, but we've planned a lot just for you. We start things off with our daily news. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Friday, November 12, 2021. Jamaica is expected to welcome 1.5 million visitors by December 31 with estimated earnings of 1.9 billion US dollars. Director of Tourism Donovan White gave those projections for the 2021 calendar year recently. He says the revenue forecast is based on two main things, an uptick in the length of visitor stay from 7.1 to 8 days, as well as an increase in the average spend from 169 to 180 US dollars per day per visitor since the reopening of the industry. He says this means that for the first time, our destination earnings are beginning to outpace arrivals, leading to projections of the destination returning to pre-COVID levels of performance round about the third quarter of 2023. According to the Director of Tourism, it is expected that by the end of 2023, Jamaica will welcome 4.1 million visitors, split between 2.5 million stopovers and 1.6 million cruise passengers, with a revenue outturn of about 4.2 billion US dollars. This compares to 4.2 million visitors and 3.7 billion US dollars in earnings for 2019. The 2023 projection represents an uptick of about half a billion dollars in earnings. The tourism director says the JTB is working with the relevant stakeholders to ensure that Destination Jamaica continues to foster this growth. The Ministry of Education will be establishing a National Child Online Protection Committee to protect children participating in online learning. Minister Fable Williams announced Cabinet's approval of the committee during this week's post-Cabinet press briefing. She says now more than ever, it is critical for students to have access to a tool that will protect them in the digital space. The COVID-19 pandemic has served to underscore the importance of online learning as a key component of the delivery of educational services in Jamaica. Notwithstanding the tremendous benefits of technology and the use of ICT, online platforms present significant challenges to the safety of children in the virtual environment. Given the vicissitudes and hazards of the virtual space. The minister says cabinet also gave approval for her to name a chair for the committee and for the committee's mandate to include the development of a national child online protection strategy. Meanwhile, the education ministry has received another donation of 100 tablets to help students navigate learning in the online space. First Heritage Cooperative Credit Union, FHC Foundation, made the contribution to the ministry's One Laptop or Tablet Per Child initiative on Thursday. And what's especially heartening for us is that 40 of these devices will be distributed to our special needs students. And we believe that we, through this donation, will be helping to secure the future of our children. Acting Chief Education Officer Dr. Kassan Troop says the schools receiving the devices are among those identified for priority attention after the ministry did an assessment of students with special needs to determine how many are without the technology learning tools. She urged the students who are benefiting to be deliberate in ensuring they use the devices for their learning and not to be distracted by other things online. We know what the online world brings. A lot of distraction. So this act of kindness is not for you to be distracted, but for you to be focused and for you to maximize on this opportunity of learning. Beneficiary institutions include the Windsor School of Special Education, Listermere Gilby, Maypen Unit, Carberry Court Special Education Unit, Randolph Lopez School of Hope and Minto Primary, Penline, Chatsworth, Spanish Town and Enid Bennett Primary, Kingston and Christiana High, Sister Society, YMCA, and Norman Gardens Primary and Junior High are also receiving devices. With the launch of its Offenses, Points to Prove, and Authorities Handbook 2021, the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, now has a reference guide to 104 offenses and 103 related legal terms. 
The Electronic Handbook is a comprehensive reference tool with concise explanations of the key elements required to establish certain criminal offenses and identify gaps in the evidence around crucial legal issues and points of law. Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson says its creation is part of the redevelopment of the Forces Legal Affairs Division. He was speaking at the virtual launch recently. There has been a consistent push to get our investigators always improving, even the good ones, because you can always improve. And I think that is fundamental. The quality of your investigations is fundamental, core business for our police force. Because what we do has to uh, support, reinforce the criminal justice system. The electronic handbook is being made available on the JCF's website, circulated among members of staff, and shared with the force's key stakeholders. Director of Public Prosecutions Paula Llewellyn says it is a critical tool for improving the quality of cases that are brought before the courts. This particular handbook is going to go a far way in what I would call the continuing legal ed education of law enforcement, because that is critical for the success of the investigation now. The handbook was developed through the collaborative efforts of the JCF, the DPP's office, and the Integrity Commission. Funding was provided through the Bureau of International Narcotics and Law Enforcement Affairs of the United States Embassy in Kingston. And finally, over 40,000 Jamaicans have benefited from diagnostic services paid for by the government under the Enhancing Healthcare Services Delivery Project. Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton gave the update at Wednesday's sitting of the House of Representatives. He reveals that since the start of the project in September 2019, 16 private sector entities have been engaged to complete 40,615 tests, including CT scans, MRIs, ultrasounds, mammograms, and fluoroscopic studies. Dr. Tufton says the services were provided at no cost to Jamaicans, with government footing the $1.4 billion bill. He says the ministry is in the process of getting an independent review to validate the impact of the project. But in the meantime, an internal assessment suggests it has already resulted in a reduction of hospital stay and bed occupancy by an average two days. No, it may not sound much if you look at this data of persons who are staying in our hospitals, Madam Speaker. We have about 360,000 Jamaicans in that, in that period. And if on average you have a, a, a patient, because they can get the test done quickly, reducing their stay time from seven or eight days to six or five days, it creates the turnover and improves the efficiency for more persons to access bed space. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. trees if we are to be able to live on this planet. So I want to encourage you to join and partner with the My Tree Legacy Promotion and support your alma mater. For me, St. Peter and Paul, Campion College, University of West Indies, roll out and plant some trees. Register your alma mater for the Forestry Department's My Tree Legacy Promotion and be a part of the preservation of Jamaica, land we love. Let us highlight your contribution. Submit videos or pictures of you leaving your mark. Every tree counts. Plant a tree today and keep climate change away. In only a matter of days, fully vaccinated Jamaicans will get the chance to watch the football match between the reggae boys and the US. But there is a process, and here's exactly how it works and the COVID-19 safety plans government has implemented. Sporting activities have always been a part of our Jamaican culture, and the COVID-19 pandemic created a kind of pause to what we grew accustomed to. Well, come November 16th, individuals will be given a chance to witness a sporting event in real time. I want to just say that this is a real uh, momentous occasion. We took a look at the various indicators of COVID-19 
to allow us to make the determination of the safe reopening of the games to facilitate spectators. For the match against the United States on November the 16th, the Jamaica Football Federation is pleased to be part of a paradigm shift in the sporting landscape of Jamaica. In only a matter of days, approximately 5,000 fully vaccinated Jamaicans over the age of 18 will get the chance to watch a football match in a way that they haven't been able to for 17 months. This joint government approach is being led by the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development in partnership with the Ministries of Health and Sport through the launch of a carefully strategized online application system. Fully vaccinated spectators can get their tickets to reserve their seats at the National Stadium. This events authorization system that has been developed specifically for the purpose will be used to facilitate persons wishing to attend the game at the National Stadium. It is on a first come, first serve basis. There will be no preferential treatment for anybody, persons who access the, the app will be allowed the opportunity once they meet the requirements that have been set out. The app is a game changer. But just what are these requirements? Firstly, to be fully vaccinated. And it's important to say what fully vaccination means. So you must have a two week period for double, the second, or the single dose to be considered fully vaccinated. First thing is that you're gonna upload um, on the database with your vaccine card, and an ID, so passport, a national ID, driver's license, and the Ministry of Health and Wellness team will verify the authenticity of the vaccination card using our online database. Once the information is verified and approved, the Ministry will pass this information on to the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development. And of course, I know he's working with the JFF, so they will also have access to that qualified applicant and that person will be able to purchase a ticket to attend the match using a QR code that will be generated as part of the ticket purchase. All the necessary measures to ensure that there is compliance have already started to be put in place. This means that if you do decide to go out and watch the match, you'll still be required to wear your masks and you'll notice sanitization stations all over the stadium. And while the match time is 5 p.m., the gates will be opening from as early as 1 p.m. to prevent possible crowding at the entry points. Plus, there will be special arrangements in the facility for proper social distancing, with only 5,000 persons being granted access to a 28,000 capacity stadium. You may have to sit two or three seats apart so that you don't, you know, create the, the closeness that could put you at increased risk. And for your added security and reassurance, the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport and the Jamaica Football Federation, JFF, are working overtime. The JFF is working with public health authorities to have in place a network of trained COVID-19 marshals as well as security personnel to monitor compliance with the respective protocols. We will utilize bullhorns, signage, and our match announcers to remind persons about the health protocols as well as entry points. There will be very limited physical outlets for persons to purchase where they may have challenges with online purchases. These outlets will be advertised and let me remind you, there will be no selling of paper tickets. Refreshments will not be available in the stadium. On the periphery, people will be permitted to do their vending. There will be a series of medical protocols to be guided by public health authorities 
as well as JFF Medical Committee. So, with 330,000 Jamaicans now fully vaccinated, all you now need to do is cheer our reggae boys on to victory. The JFF sees this move as a sign for better days to come for our nation. Sports in Jamaica is looking to slowly but surely turn the corner on a COVID-19 travel road. Indeed, a journey. The JFF is pleased that the first decision that emerged from our meetings and consultations is that 5,000 fully vaccinated paying fans will be allowed in the national stadium, 1,000 in the grandstand, and 4,000 in the bleachers. Because of the limited numbers, persons getting approval will have to purchase their ticket in 48 hours in order not to hold up the opportunity for others. But what does this mean for local sporting activities and just for Jamaica's development in general? The Prime Minister has been very clear. The time has come for us to resume normality as best as we can. Still sensitive to the threat, but pivoting to a life with COVID. We have entered a new and sophisticated phase in our sporting landscape with much more reliance on the digital world. The pandemic has forced it on us, but it was inevitable. And besides this match, there will be more opportunities to come together as a nation to support our own. If you miss the opportunity to be at this game on November 16, January 27, we engage the leaders in CONCACAF, Mexico, at the National Stadium. We are now in the process of taking the right direction as we seek to administer and to reopen sections of the country. Did you know that there are medical, academic, and social benefits of doing a sport? Exercising regularly can reduce the risk of non-communicable diseases such as cancer and stroke. Working together promotes important life skills such as teamwork, leadership, problem solving, and mutual respect. And competing nurtures sportsmanship and lasting friendships, as well as improves self-esteem and resilience. So join a sport today and enjoy these benefits. As we observe Global Entrepreneurship Week, we'll witness how two young Jamaicans are transforming their ideas into products and services to unlock economic opportunities. The rewards are absolutely sweet. Just see for yourself. Me and my sister got started when we were very young. I think I was six or something around that age. And uh, my mom had four box, four hives, and that is the beginning of success. The name of our family business is Maccabee Enterprise. Uh, here at Maccabee Enterprise, we are all beekeepers, down to my nine-year-old sister, Camila. Working with the bees is nice. It's less challenging than back in the days. Don't want to sound too old. Um, it is fun now. I am more confident. Yeah. Um, it is calming, soothing. It takes you out of this world, bring in another. So it, it's fun. It's actually fun. My role here on the farm is using an extractor. To extract honey, um, there are many ways. I will be explaining two ways. First is the professional method where you use an extractor. So you have a capping knife, a knife with like a serrated edge. And you would uncap 
which is a thin sheet of wax on top of the comb with the honey inside. So it's like a seal. So you use a knife and uncap that. Then you put it in the extractor and spin it. And it would flash out on the side of the extractor and drain to the bottom and then you leak it out into a bucket. The other way is, well, when you don't have an extractor, is that you'd use a capping fork or you could use a regular fork and you would hold the frame uh, like this, long way, and you'd use the fork and gently scrape the frame. So you're taking off the comb, you're removing the comb from the frame in a sense, but you'd have on the frame there is a sheet of wax that we would put on as beekeepers foundation so it would guide the bees like it would guide the bees to build more small cells that would get more workers in the hive from the bees we get five main products right we have pollen propolis, beeswax, honey, and royal jelly. So based on those five things, we actually think about what we can do with those five things. So in beekeeping, we, have, we actually have honey flow periods and we have dirt season. Those are the two main periods. In between, we have like a pre-flow and um, pre-dirt basically. But okay, so in our honey season that's the time when they're on production they're bringing in their honey their pollen everything they on top but for like in st thomas there is like a six month period where there's dirt there's no honey coming no much honey that we can reap there's just enough for them to have for them to feed themselves and their babies and be able to stay alive in the dirt period when there's not enough honey for us to harvest and be able to sell we do things like remove our old combs and boil it out and we get wax with the wax we do like the body butters we do candles lip conditioner um so that's the wax with the pollen we actually call it the pollen and the pollen is a very good multivitamins so we actually call it the pollen and um dry it and package it for sale for the royal jelly, we don't do a lot of work with the royal jelly. Um, as we go along, we are actually developing products. So um, for the royal jelly right now, we put it in our honey wine. And then again, the honey wine is made from honey. My involvement in making the byproducts are production. I do most of the labels. Um, I have help. So I can't take all the credit, but most of the labels are from me. I do social media marketing. Um, so most of the WhatsApp texts, um, Instagram, they might mostly be from me. My younger siblings involvement in the business is some help with the production. So there is some small things like shredding the wax that they can do. They help with the bees as well because we're we're homeschool and we kind of tag along with our parents right through and through. So with the bees and with production and my younger sister, she's very artistic. So when I'm actually doing the labels, sometimes she would draw this beautiful picture and I would actually use that as part of the label. I have four personal hives for myself. I have three long, long struts, which is the regular kind of box that you would see that holds 10 frame and they would stack on one or one on top of the other and i have one top bar which is a 30 frame box which goes a long way and it only has a top bar it doesn't have the top bar with the square it doesn't have a frame it's just the top bar advice to other youth interested in beekeeping is you have to be persistent and you have to be confident and you have to be committed to beekeeping. Beekeeping can be very wide. You don't have to just stuck with 
the bees, the sting, the honey. There is so much more that you can do. You can do candles. There is actually a shortage of beeswax candles. And beeswax candles are very easy. You mold, you wick, you, you color if you need, and you're done. Um, lip conditioner is another easy one. And if you go on online, just take some of your time out of your texting and just research some products that you can, that you can actually do from the products that you get from the bees, the five products I mentioned. There's so much more. As you heard, it's Global Entrepreneurship Week from November 8 to 14. Here are a few details on this observance. Number one, the week is being observed under the theme Reboot, Rethink, Regenerate. Number two, the Jamaica Business Development Corporation, JBDC, has been hosting a number of events to celebrate the week. And persons wishing to engage can visit their website at www.jbdc.net. Number three. The week was created to celebrate the creativity and the hard work of entrepreneurs and to thank them for contributing to economic development. Number four, this week was also designed to connect people around the world with the tools and resources needed to engage in an entrepreneurial activity. And our fifth and final point, Global Entrepreneurship Week empowers new and budding entrepreneurs and those who face challenges to start and build up their own companies. Practice good hygiene by washing your hands frequently using soap and water. Here's how you should do it while conserving water. Turn on the tap to wet your hands, then turn off the pipe. Lather your hands and the tap with soap. Turn on the tap and wash your hands, back, front, and in between fingers. Use some of the water to wash off the tap, then turn it off. Dry your hands with disposable hand towels. If you don't have running water, use a hand rub containing 62% or more alcohol. If hand sanitizers are not available, rubbing alcohol, Dettol, white rum, or household bleach will do the trick. And if all else fails, let hand washing and the handling of potable water be a two-person event. Each person will take turns pouring and washing hands with sitting water. Now is a good time to consider installing a tap on your containers to reduce the risk of water contamination. Faucets can be easily attached to drums, buckets, or five-gallon water bottles. And to ensure that the outside of the containers are clean when recapping, disinfect it with hand rub containing alcohol that's 62% or more. The five hours of water conservation are also necessary to practice. Reduce water wastage by investing in water-saving devices. Reuse water at least twice before discarding. Replace leaking pipes, faucets, and other plumbing equipment. Recycle wastewater and use it for gardening, car washing, or cleaning of public spaces. And reclaim water through rainwater harvesting. We all must play our part to ensure there's water to combat the coronavirus and stave off prolonged drought. This is where we put the final pause for today's show. Thanks for sticking through the Jamaica Magazine journey. This and other shows, plus all features, can be seen via the JIS's YouTube channel. Also, visit our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages for more information. From all of us here at the JIS, I'm Theodore Henry. See you soon. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. Thank you.